So it's just one week until Cheltenham now and uh, what we've been doing at the moment is reminiscing. Rather than looking ahead, we're going to look back today and we're going yep. to look back on your favourite five renewals of the Champion Chase, Dan. Yeah, I had a few choices. You opened the floor, said so pick a race in particular. Mm. I feel like I've got the easy choice there. I know Lynchy did the Supreme, which mm. is a race that is emotive for so many reasons, but um, it's the first race of the festival. Buy-in mentions of Curtain Razor and Cheltenham Roar on the spreads. Mm -hmm. It's always a, a profitable angle. Um, but I went with Champion Chase. And one of the reasons is my number one, as anybody who follows me on Twitter will know who my favourite horse of all time is probably, if you check out my pinned tweet, mm -hmm. but I just think it's a great race. And I think, yes, we've had a few renewals that are flops. New Mills springs to mind. You could even say that last year's wasn't strong, mm. won by um, Special Tiara, <laughs> you know, last year's champion chase winner there. Um, but it's a, it's a race that by its nature is it, thrilling. It's mm. the best two milers, so it's the quickest chasers in training. And that's effectively what it is. Who can go fastest and sustain it? And it's served up in the what twenty years of my racing interest that mm. we're covering. Apologies to anyone who thinks I've lost the plot because I've not included something from the eighties. I'm afraid my knowledge doesn't go back that far. It barely goes back two weeks at the moment. But. Um, I've gone for five. I mm. hope you agree. If you disagree, let us know. And if you saw me looking towards the screen, it's because we've got a brand new innovation today. The time form marketing laptop is up and running, so we can actually see comments as they come in. I can see myself. That's you can see yourself as well. Yeah, we can, we can watch as well. And uh, I'm afraid that my racing knowledge, just about, I remember one at number three. Apart from that, though, with the 2007 backwards, is, yeah. uh, it's going to be patchy ground for me, I'm afraid. There's a horse you will know whose initials are SS, so I suspect everybody will know, mm -hmm. and he's a dual winner of the race, but it's one with the initials SDG that I'm going to go for, for number one, and that's Sire de Grugy in 2014, not because it was a spectacular performance, mm -hmm. not because on the ratings it was otherworldly, in fact it was bang average, mm -hmm. but it was more like a lifetime achievement award for this horse, because I just loved the way he was campaigned. Um, he went to every big gig, turned up, um, performed, almost always won. And it was just a great scene, I think, <clears throat> from a pure purist point of view, for the horse who had been the coming force, admittedly taking advantage of the absence of Sprinter Sacker, etc., and his, his misfortune. But the horse who was campaigned so openly kept busy, thrived on his racing, got the prize that he's, mm. his campaign is so richly deserved and he hadn't finished there either, but he was a great likeable horse who had a real enthusiastic way of going, wasn't a shabby hurdler by any means, mm. but once he went chasing there was absolutely no looking back and in terms of deserving champion chase winners for how they were, their season was mapped out mm. and when he'd be about top of the list actually. He was all heart as well when he when he won it yeah. that year too. It was it was great, great to watch. It was. He was gutsy. I think I was doing time for back in the time for radio days. I was doing. Mm. I was on that day, and the, there was almost a weird feeling with him in terms of his price. You, I don't think people knew whether it was a great price because mm. look, he's the one that's been there and done it. The the other half was, he had this reputation that he wasn't actually a star and something would come and beat him, but as he did for the remainder of the season, he just batted away our challenges. He was a great, great horse and um, retired, wasn't he, this season? So. Yeah, I mean, no disrespect to the horse I'm about to mention, but he fi he felt like Politologue. Yeah. Because he's won the Tingle Creek this year and obviously Altior's come back enough. and brushed him aside and that, yeah. I think that was the vibe around side of Grugy, but he... Um, yeah, I think he deserves well. higher praise than that mm. because he did win the main one. Politologue hasn't had the chance mm. to do so. I think we'd all be surprised if he does win. And he's got Altio to contend with for one thing. Saida Gruji was, as I say, was a bit lucky because he was around during Sprinter Sacra's off time. Mm. And he was just, a, I don't know, just everything you want in a race horse, really. As you say, tough, genuine, but had loads of enthusiasm to go with it. Loved the game. And I also remember him coming back and winning off top weight in a handicap at Chepstow. I mean, there was, mm -hmm. he did it in all types of races. What other champion chaser? would have even started in a handicap like that. There wouldn't be many of them. So, yeah, a great one at number five, I think. So, number five in 2014. We go 16 years further back for you, number four. Yeah, age 14. Mm -hmm. um, not old enough to bet, but certainly keen enough. Um, having... 
quids or whatever mm. on about four horses in the champion chase. I think only looking back on about eight or nine ran, and this was 1998, might I say, with one man. He wasn't one of those, I had a shekel on. But despite that backdrop that I'd done my pocket money um, by illegal means, um, what what we did see there was similar to Saidi Gruji, another big prize that that horse deserved because he was tagged as a non-stayer, a weak finisher, whatever you want to say, because he ran in, I think it was two Gold Cups, and we say hit the wall, and mm. clearly it's just a turn of phrase. It almost looked like he had hit the wall on the second year he tried it, because he led travelling best, and then stopped. Prior winner of the King George, so his, his class for three miles was never in doubt. But this was a new thing, he'd gone Ascot Chase before Cheltenham, mm. it, I think Tony Dobbin got injured in the run-up to the race, so he couldn't ride, so it was like super sub Brian Harding, so there was another story. It was a, a winner for the North, in a time, to be honest, where they had some really good two-milers. Alice Charlton had Lord Dorset, who was a good animal, I think he ran in the same race, and, and also asked Tom, Tom Tate was a was a super big imposing two-miler, who, uh, if memory serves, actually went off favourite for this renewal, but one man looked like he'd been running over two miles all his career, or two miles was what he's always wanted even as a King George winner because the race was his at every possible point he was pushed into a long lead in the straight never looked like relinquishing it the, the race was over as I say a, a long long way out and then there's obviously the sad twist that he then went to Aintree had only one more start and was killed in a fall so it was great I suppose for connections in the mm -hmm. sense that they'd at least they'd had that one opportunity for him to have to to put to bed those those Cheltenham demons that he had from runs in the Gold Cup when he got the chance to tackle two miles. Always happens to the good ones, doesn't it? Things like yeah, that. It is sad. I mean, we're lucky that the first one, Manchester Saturday Grouchy, has gone out mm -hmm. in, a, in A1 condition. Now, number three on your list. Um, a shame, really, but the colours he carried are probably more associated with another horse. Good He's point, a, yeah. a legend, but he, he was very good in his own right. Yeah, this is masterminded in 2008, and mm -hmm. there was just a perfect storm here. It was a strongly run race thanks to Tamarin Blur, mm. who'd won at Ascot prior, like broken the clock almost. It was an outrageous performance. He probably left his Cheltenham behind there, but he still served a purpose in that he went hard. And we often say when it comes to posting big ratings, you're a hostage to the others in the race. How far can they push you? And the likes of Tamarin Blur and the previous year's winner, Viper Usteadies, in their different ways with the two that pushed this huge performance out of Masterminded, who was a relatively new face on the, on the scene. He won, a, I think he ran at Exeter first, he won a Sandown Handicap. Um, he then went and won the game Spirit when he beat Viper Steadies, but that was a seven length winning margin. And in a race where they went hard in front and he sat off it, he won by 18 lengths at the expense of the same horse, Viper Steadies, the reigning champion, and absolutely destroyed him. It was just, equine poetry in motion really everything went perfectly the horse tanked he jumped superbly and as soon as as soon as they were they cleared the third or fourth last you knew it was a case of well mm. this is just falling into his lap and because of what the others done and because he had that real brilliance this horse he was he flamed out fairly quickly we didn't he did win it the following year but he wasn't mm. half as impressive this was masterminded 100% in a strongly run race that brought the very best out of him and he was absolutely scintillating. I mean, I remember turning around in the office just shaking my head to, to my old boss Simon Walker, what, what on earth is this thing? I mean, it was, it was mind blowing. Mm. Yet, a matter of years later, under a decade later, we were treated to another pretty special, big imposing ex-French horse. We were, yeah. And I think uh, I've seen a few comments on Twitter of people getting involved about their favourite one, and these two seem to stand out. And it's a bit, it's it's a tough choice for you. It's like a Gareth Gates, Will Young choice for you, Dan. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say Gareth Bale, <laughs> Gareth Bale, Will Young. I'll go with Gareth Bale, I think. <laughs> so uh, who's your number two? Uh, Sprinter Sacra, not his first, which was brilliant, but it mm. was fully expected. Um, but his second, because I'm sure there were many people. And I can't say I wasn't one of them. After Kempton, when scrambled in that race with mm. Saida Gruz, you thought, well, the end is nigh for him. But he had returned in really good fashion in the slur chase from his much, much publicised issues. So he came back in the slur, went fresh, and obliterated them. Mm. 
um, turned out fairly quickly. It was a case of barely getting the job done um, at Kempton in the Desert Orchid. So at that stage, you think, what are you going to judge him on? Do you judge him on the wide margin win where you assume nothing else has given his running? Or do you judge him on this latest performance mm -hmm. where he's neck and neck with Saida Gruzzi, who himself probably wasn't operating at maximum capacity at that stage? And whichever view you took, I think the majority were very much in the latter category, mm -hmm. that that was all we could get out of Sprinter Sacra nowadays. We had Underso as the short price favourite coming over from Ireland for Willie Mullins. He was deemed to be the one that would carry all before him. Uh, one thing about him, he, in terms of physical makeup, there's no comparison to so mm. stocky thing, not not loads of scope. Sprinter Sacra just walked over the fences. We know it was a was a glorious sight when in full flow, and this was just a story, wasn't it? Mm. It was a horse who'd been written off, making this Lazarus style redemption bid and and winning fair and square. The scene and the noise as he took up the running, entering mm. the straight or on the home turn. Imagine anyone was there that w that will live with them forever because it was a realization that Christ, he, he's back, he's gonna do it, and it was like a nice handing over the bat on there. It was under so who cracked the one who was supposedly the one who was now the dominant mm. figure, and he's now had to hand that baton back to the old champion who was regaining the crown that he won three years earlier. Great, great performance from him. Now, I don't want to ask too many questions because we're doing a Twitter Q&A in, in a few minutes on, on, on Twitter, but do you think it, it's the sort of thing that could be rivaled if Duvan or Fahim do the same thing, or is, was that just in a league of its own? I don't, I don't know if it's the machine-like nature of Mullins' horses, but I wonder if we're so used to them winning these big mm. races. Not that we're not with Henderson, but I don't think there's ever the same sort of public support for Mullins' horses as maybe the gallant Nichols horse that goes mm. to every every dance. But in the case of Prince of Sacra, it was because I think people like said he was the best horse we'd ever seen. Mm. Time form ratings back that up. In modern times, obviously excluding Arco and Flying Bolt. What what he did say though was it's almost like if you if you think of it, a darts analogy might be when Phil Taylor's making his mm. way up through the ranks, everyone wants him to win. When he's brilliant, everybody wants him to lose. And then as it's clear he's not the force of old, people mm. regain a bit of sympathy for him or a bit of support. And I suppose it's very similar to that. You almost, once he's shown he'd fall, he's fallible, mm. and his reputation and the adulation of the public only grew. And to see him come back and at the scene of his, of his former glories was mm. just quite incredible. Now, I don't remember this one, but for it to be number one, it must have been quite a performance. Yeah, it's notable for a few things. Uh, David Johnson, flat editor, tweeted out earlier a link to Jonathan Rendell's, the late Jonathan Rendell's program called The Gambler, which was an amazing, if you were into betting as I was, and as you well, it was just really exciting to watch, really interesting. Um, and he features on there, because he's had a big bet on flagship Uber Alice, whose chance goes at the third last with a bad mistake. So he's, you're almost living out the drama of the race through mm -hmm. Rendell's eyes, but then when you see the race, Flexi Food Browse's performance is neither here nor there. It's about two horses. It's about Edrin on Blur, my favourite ever horse, and Direct Root, the strong travelling Howard Johnson horse, who came there absolutely powering. Looked a matter of when Williamson presses a button, he was now Williamson presses a button, it's game over. Mm -hmm. But you had, not for the first time in their careers, and not the only time, you had McCoy in an extremely determined mood on Edredon Blur, firing him at fences, the horse being brave and coming up, and then having the will to win and the, and the guts to, to resist this, what looked an irre irresistible challenge from, from direct route. It was, it was quite incredible for all the things that flagship out of the race. Well, what we're left with now? Well, we're left with this incredible finish mm. between two of the heir apparent. Edredon Blur mentioned in handicap ranks, he had been a horse that made his way through handicaps. Moscow Flyer had done that. Mm. Um, but there was just something so stirring about this race the other thing Simon Holt's commentary is amazing to the point that when he says direct route it sounds like his voice is just broken I mean the moment gets halted there it's, <laughs> it's just ridiculous how and even passing the line for me I can't believe he's won mm. it was it was reminiscent of an article which I think would have been 98-99 where Sean Plev and Hill Society mm. fought it out and Sean Plev was in front under an attacking McCoy ride you look at the still on the line, you can't believe that Hill Society hasn't got at least a dead heat out of it. And as they pass it, 
in that 2000 champion chase it's a similar feeling that oh he's been chinned he didn't mm. deserve that such joy therefore when two minutes later the photo was announced and he had actually fended off direct route it was in terms of excitement in terms of finish look a few of these side of Gruji, nothing flashy about the display one man yeah it was one a long way out mm. masterminded one a long way out sprinter sacra effectively won by the home turn once he'd hit the front this one had it all because it was, there was a story behind it but there was also an incredible tight finish between two game and absolutely top class two mile chasers which is exactly what the the race is designed for tremendous well thank you very much for that dan and in about half an hour's time you'll be back and with your time form cap on yeah because, yeah uh, we're doing a QA over on twitter yeah and hopefully there's more than five questions so we can well, fill an hour i've contributed for you so thank uh, you, yeah yeah i saw yours yours was yeah. a mischievous one what's not quick yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't a, like it either. You've got, you've got to ask a Wigan Athletic question to a Man yeah. City fan, of, you know, if there's ever a chance. So we'll see you in about half an hour on Twitter. Thank you, mate. Pleasure. <laughs>